Hi everyone, I'm Max Margana, and I'm here to talk about cross-sectional equity trading strategies. So a cross-sectional equity trading strategy can be abstracted into several main parts. First off, as with every quantitative trading strategy or every trading strategy in general, we need to start off with some form of data. Whether it is fundamentals data or pricing data or any number of, a, uh, of, of alternative data sets. Any data set that you think will have some effect on the future returns of security that is something that you can use when you're putting together a cross-section equity trading strategy. Once we have all these data sets, we need to filter down our universe to really define what we're trying to go for. Create a white list of stocks that we actually want to execute trades upon. Because there are a bunch of different components that go into this, right? You want to make sure that, you can, that you're trading stocks that you can actually trade. Because when you set your trading strategy off into the wild, it's just going to go and try to execute trades, regardless of whether it can or not. And if it's securities that aren't liquid enough, securities that just don't have enough volume, or securities that are the targets of mergers or acquisitions or any number of other concerns, then you might end up uh, running into trouble when your strategy actually tries to execute things. Once we have this defined universe of securities that we're relatively confident that we can trade, uh, securities that we want to be trading, we can start defining alpha signals. When you have various different alpha signals, what we're trying to get is a number for each individual stock that is predictive of its future returns. So for one individual alpha signal, what you want is every single stock in your universe to have a number, and you want the highest number to correspond with the highest future expected return and the lowest number ideally the most negative number to correspond with the lowest future expected return then we can go long on the securities that have the highest numbers the highest ranking and we can go short on the securities that have the lowest ranking and we construct several of these individual alpha factors in many many different ranking schemes once we have these individual alpha signals what we want is to combine them in some way or another each individual signal is ideally independent of each other. And whenever we have a uh, portfolio, we want to be as diverse as possible. We want to have as many different independent signals to create an aggregate, stronger whole. This is the alpha combination step. And we can do this in whatever way we choose. This can be simply equal weighting, adding the ranks together. This can be uh, trying to come up with, with uh, something novel, trying to use some sort of machine learning method to figure out the optimal way to combine these. But uh, long story short, once we have this mega alpha signal, we need to then go and actually construct our portfolio, right? Every security in our universe has a mega alpha value. And once this is done, well, we need to figure out how we want to actually execute our trades. So we're going to have some objective in the portfolio construction step. And that objective can be maximizing return. It can be minimizing variance. It can be an inverse volatility weighted portfolio. It can be trying to put as much capital as possible in the highest ranked and the lowest ranked securities. Once we have these uh, chosen positions, well, we need to figure out how useful these are actually going to be in light of whatever constraints we want to apply. And these constraints can include things like a risk model defined upon the universe that we, uh, that we were previously using. It can be uh, some maximum amount of volatility that is allowed. It can be maximum position concentrations. Like All of this gets taken together with our chosen objective function to come up with the ideal portfolio that we want to trade. And this ideal portfolio is then considered in light of the portfolio that we currently have. And that difference between it, we, we, we try to make some sort of comp compromise using, using this optimization routine. And the compromise of this gives us a list of trades that we can actually execute upon. It will bring us from our old portfolio to our new ideal portfolio. And that is when our strategy is actually executing, actually out in the wild. Then we go back and we do it all over again.